have here this evening Select Board Member Sharon Russell. I'm Mary Ashcroft, um, Select Board Chair. We have Bill Sweet, who is our Town Administrative <laughs> Assistant to the Select Board. We have Howard Burgess, and we have Dick Bailey, Member of the Public. And Don Chaffee is coming in. Hey, Don. Hi, Marcia. Um, so we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We're starting. Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all. Uh, we're, this is the second of two listening sessions being held by the town of Rutland to discuss what we should be doing and getting as many ideas as possible, what we should be doing with the town share of the ARPA funds coming from the federal government. Select board member Don Chaffee is joining us. Um, so we're hoping for a lot of good creative ideas and we've got several people who would like to participate. So let's jump in. Um, Lydia, I think you said you had some time limitation. Do you have something you'd like to add before? Should I start with you then? You said Lydia? No, Lydia's just here to listen. Okay. All right. Well, you're welcome. Good to hear from you. Um, since he is here live and in person and he's already taken the microphone. Sorry, Kirsten. Um, we're going to start first with Dick Bailey. So... What do you have for us? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just more or less concerned, or not concerned, but interested in just what funds are available. In other words, how much are we talking about? Okay. And there's, I mean, certainly there's some things that the funds probably wouldn't even come close to making a scratch in for some of the issues we have, but obviously there's some things that might be very well addressed by them. So that's what I'd like to know. Okay. Well, I'll start with a little background that as far as I know, Don, I think has gone through some of the League of Cities and Towns training as well. Um, we have coming to us as our share, $430,000. It's coming in two equal installments. One is supposed to be like momentarily dropping into the account we've set up and the other will be paid within a year. Okay, so that's what we know. There are restrictions on what we can use it for. This is for COVID relief recovery. So um, obvious things would be, you know, um, health, health things related to COVID recovery, um, programs that would assist people who have lost their jobs because of COVID. So it could be loan or grant programs for you know, certain individuals or businesses or nonprofits in town. Um, it can be used for certain kinds of infrastructure. Um, we were actually looking at that a little bit because I think we can use it on some stormwater mitigation. Um, we can't use it to pave roads. You know, we know that. Um, we can use it for water sewer projects to some extent. Um, trying to think of other things. There's, there was a whole list of things. If you're really, if you're interested in getting into some details, um, the League of Cities and Towns has quite a bit of information and they also have a link to um, the federal interim rules. I don't know if they're past the interim stage yet, but yeah. but they're 35 pages long. So, you know, and leave it for light reading. You might remember yeah. some well, more too. I don't, I don't remember them any more than you do, Mary, but <laughs> maybe I, I put, as I said before at our last meeting, <coughs> and, and I wish that you would approach it this way and anyone else who's listening would approach it this way. The federal government is prone to be much more lenient as opposed to strict in the interpretation of the use of these funds. Um, that doesn't mean that you can use them for obvious things that are not COVID related somehow or other or recovery related. Recovery is a very broad and general word and a, and, and a broad and general term and can be applied in many different ways to activities that either didn't take place in town and should have, 
thereby, therefore be eligible for replacement funds or things that could be construed as recovery because of loss of jobs, loss of enterprise, loss of business, closing of businesses. So I think in general that we should look at this as covering a lot more things than not. And my, <clears throat> my admonition and my advice to anyone, including our own board, is to be as liberal as possible with the application of these funds. We can always be told no, but if you don't ask, you don't get. And that's my that's yeah, that's my attitude. Be creative. Yeah, well, I like the word liberal, Don. Good to hear it coming from your lips. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I wouldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have always been a social liberal. So be and creative. A fiscal conservative. And this is not our money, but actually it is our money. But it is our money. It's yeah. going to be spent on us. We've already been allocated the money. So uh, I would say we wouldn't throw it away, but that we would throw it to something that will benefit the town. That reminds me, because we do have time to think about this. Um, the funds have to be allocated for use by December 31st of 2024. So we've got wow. time. Yeah. I guess so. Way better than the first round of funding that yeah. came through. And then we have two more years after that to actually finish spending the money once it's allocated. Great. So well, you know, we're, in, we're in good shape. Mary, I have a question for you. Uh, uh, before yeah, we okay. go further... Uh, these funds, the 434, are separate from the county funds. Are they yes. Not? Yeah. The we county funds, we, well, we don't know what it's going to, we have a rough idea of what it's going to be, which could be another 750 to $800,000. For the whole county. No, or our share. Us. But, but the question is the interpretation of what happens when, uh, states, there are a few that don't have county governments, and we only only have municipalities. So Congress really hasn't dealt with that yet. So it could be it goes to the county government that structure that we do have, mm. um, but it could also just pass through to the towns. But I think at one point I calculated somewhere we could be getting 1.2 or 3 million altogether, wow. in, including the, yeah our share of the county funds. But we don't know that. We can't count on the county thing yet, but we could very well be getting additional Oh, funding. okay. So what you're saying is that 700 would be our our, our portion of it if, if it goes that way. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, Howard. Uh, on, the, on the county thing, that, that's mm -hmm. what I was going to mention. Okay. The director of, uh, that I was talking to from uh, it's a uh, it's the sewer and water group up, up north. Okay. It's anyways, and she told me, she said, there's a good chance that from the county, we can get another 400 and some thousand. She said, she, she seemed to, she said, she mentioned the fact that counties were treated differently. Yeah. Different, different parts of the states and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but that's what she, she mentioned. She okay. Said, so. And then there's the other infrastructure um, projects, appropriations that Congress is dealing with right now. And that I mean, we're not even counting any of that. But that could very well have something to do with what we're doing. So you've got the microphone, but Kirsten's ready to share her ideas too. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, so a couple of thoughts that I had, and I know I'm not as um, in the know about ARPA funds as I am with some of the other funding in the um, state. But um, first I thought about the Ranbury Road project. Um, I wasn't sure how viable- I'm sorry, the what? Were. Say that again. Ran the Ranbury Road project okay. for the water and sewer. Um, that was my first thought. I wasn't sure uh, if they were eligible for that. Um, and then my other thought was um, with all of the empty storefronts that are all over town, um, possibly either doing something, some kind of a um, incentive or a loan program for businesses that want to move into the town. Yes. Yes. 
Um, we, we have heard that from a couple of different directions. So thank you. What are your thoughts about, you know, incentives, um, low interest loans or grants or a combination? Who should they go to and for what purpose? Um, well, I think that, um, that from what I've seen in downtown, there are a lot of younger um, first time business owners that are trying to get things off the ground. Um, I think that that might be maybe the priority for people, um, somebody who is either a, already a resident, um, or who is, um, maybe a first time business owner, um, you know, uh, something along those lines, um, and then kind of maybe have a scale from there as to, um, you know, what you do for different businesses, uh, based on, I don't know, their, their ties to the community. Um, I think it could also be helpful if, um, those businesses maybe have something to do with, um, the community as a whole. I know, um, one of the groups that we work with, um, currently is, um, at home senior care. Um, there's a lot of uh, mental health issues in the community right now, um, because of COVID, because of specifically with senior citizens, um, because of the, um, the, seclusion that a lot of them have had um, because of COVID. So I don't know if that was, um, I mean, I guess that's kind of another idea at the same time, but um, I don't know. That's kind of, kind of my thoughts on it. Okay. Well, keep them coming. I mean, those are all good ideas. And I think mental health in addition to physical health is all part of what COVID relief can be used for. So, yeah. Okay, that, so that back. jumps out at me what you're talking about. What you when you were starting to outline things, I mean, the idea of a no interest, low interest loan for these businesses that have been suffering trying to get back on their feet again mm -hmm. really appeals to me. And uh, does me too. That's, uh, I think that would be a wonderful idea, and I'm not sure how it would be implemented, but I mean, hundred thousand or a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, loans for some of these people would go a long way to keeping them back on track again. Yeah. Yeah, and I think to handle, something, yeah, to handle something like that, you might want to consider having some kind of a grants team, um, maybe a couple of people who are willing to volunteer their time to be able to sit in on um, a committee to review um, different business plans and see what might be viable and what the best options would be for where the funds go. Okay, are you volunteering? I can if you want me to. <laughs> I've done it before. But... I'd be in on that. Okay. Sure. All the help we can get. <laughs> That's Great. right. Sure. Good. Absolutely. I did do that right. with the change makers, so I'd be willing to do it. Great. Thank you. I think you. If, if it were if it were allowed, that yeah. we might be able to do a revolving loan fund. Well, here's the thing that I'm thinking about this, speaking creatively. If we did low interest, no interest loans, and then the repayment comes back to the town, we could set up a revolving fund and maybe the money that goes out in the second round isn't tied by the COVID regulation restrictions. There you are. Ah, yeah. So I'm wondering, Good so yeah. we should look Good into idea. that because, and then we would have this wonderful little pot of money that we could use to attract grow. businesses attract in town, businesses. Um, help, you know, small startups. That's Daycare right. is a, a need that I'm hearing quite a bit about. So yeah. Good. Did you Great. look at me with that with daycare? Are you trying to tell me something, Mary? I don't need daycare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need daycare for seniors and for children. <laughs> yeah, right. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> All right, she's off the committee. Over the <laughs> yes. Yes. In many right. ways, Don. Um, I will say that I received a, maybe it was in my packet or. Pardon? Yeah, we did receive, Howard, um, a request to be considered for a, a grant or a loan from the fire district. Um, sorry, I will find it. Is it the old packet or the new? Here it is. Uh, Rutland Town Fire District number six. So... Um, this is from Jim Dick, and his request is uh, they need to have a water system study that will address the major concern of obtaining a secondary water source because the number two well uh, cannot be used. Um, so they're asking for $10,000 of ARPA funds 
to the Rutland Town Fire District to fund the infrastructure study. So, and one of the sessions that you were in on this one too, League of Cities and Towns, somebody asked, are the fire districts getting money? And the answer was no, but that I think the, the answer was they're not getting it directly, but go through the town and ask. So right. that's a possibility. The Treasury Department has allowed that to. Yep. So are you thinking that's a good idea? Your fire yeah, district? I got something I want to present to you as well. Okay, let's hear it then. Howard's. No, this one is not Howard's. I know, I know. Because this is for oh, no. um, Victorian Sunset Drives. I'll guarantee yeah. you, his is a lot more than 10 grand. <laughs> well, let's see. What do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I made more copies. I didn't realize. That. Okay, thank you. Is, uh, our sewer plant. Um, down at our pump station that we have down mm -hmm. here near a river. What we really need is we need what's called a muffin monster grinder pump, which grinds up everything that comes through the sewer and just completely, totally grinds it up. We've got a mess down there with uh, all kinds of stuff that, that comes out. And every day the operators go down there and there's a grate that catches it all and they have to rake it up. And pull it up, and so there's a big pile of stuff all the time that they're pulling of, of, of raw sewage and stuff that they're pulling out onto the ground. And this this muffin monster grinder just grinds it all up. In, in addition to this stuff getting into our wet well, it's really damaging our our impellers on our pumps down there. And every now and then we have to have a one sewer drain come and pump it out and and backflow them and do a different thing because it's just and it's happening all over the state, really bad. And the other, the other thing, the other item on here is the generator. We do not have a generator down there. We're sitting right on the banks of the river. And, and what I proposed here to you was uh, some of it was a total of eighty-seven thousand dollars, and it's uh, for the uh, the muffin monster. That was going to be sixty-five thousand dollars. There was a quote in there that Belden prepared. We got the quote yeah, for, for, for the pump and everything, and then the generator is uh, 22,000 and so that's uh, hmm. that's what I'm here for the generators from Brookfield service they mm -hmm. they gave us a quote just got that today I've been rushing to get through this stuff hmm. but those are projects that I understand are eligible because they're new projects the the muffin is a new project the generator is a new project we can't use these monies for maintenance or repairs right on our system okay. uh, because they're, they're new projects they would work and you know we're not very far from, very far from the pocket park down there mm -hmm. and there's a lot of you know right at the river and there's an area around us that uh, used to be used a lot by people that used to come down to, to put you know canoes and different things in the boat in and that whole area could be cleaned up and made and made much more precious and sure. more usable for everybody. Gee, Howard, you know it's near and dear to my heart, the pocket part. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's what I'm presenting because it's, I, uh, it's something that we were pushed to do to get this stuff to the, the towns and uh, um, wherever it goes, it mm -hmm. goes. But it just, you've got... Um, so you're looking for an outright grant as opposed to a uh, low interest, no interest loan? Yeah, ideally to cover, you know, okay. cover this or part of these expenses or whatever. Yes, to, to what we really need to do is just uh, whatever, whatever. We'll take whatever we could get. Let's put it that way, whatever. Well, I, I, now I'm speaking myself. We have a fire department, a fire district that uh, would have to be involved to go along with this too right. because I'm not speaking for the you know, the whole board. How many people are part of that district? Do you know? You know, people wise, it's, it's somewhere. Well, uh, well, uh, well, we have like a hundred like, like connections. Okay, that's, then, that's what I was asking. And, over, and, we, and we also take on the whole, the Flory Heights area. There's another 25 uh, connections over so there. So that's 125. Outside, outside of the fire district. Maybe okay. Like 25. And then okay. we do, again, th this building, the fire station, Dewey's ball field. This is general area, uh, okay. right, right up to the Bennington furniture. Yep. Um, it's, uh, yep. How, uh, how 
time-wise, how critical was this? In other words, if you didn't, if we didn't have the availability of these funds, when would the when would the absolute necessity for you to bond for this come about? Yeah, all I can say is the sooner the better. But I but I took a fellow down there from Belden and he walked over and he saw what was going on. He said, "This isn't good." Mm -hmm. No, it isn't good to have a fluent going into it. I mean, it's something that uh, the sooner the better. It's just a tough thing. because they, Again, they, they, they rake your stuff off the grates. You kind of have to let it dry, so to speak, before you can put it in the containers. And then I think it's Hubbard that picks it up. But meanwhile, it's, it, it's a mess. It's, it's not so what if you got this grant or a low interest loan from the town? And then you decided to join with the West Rutland um, sewer district. And would, would we get reimbursed or how, how would that work? That I don't know, but, I, but I'm hoping that we're gonna have this vote with us in West Rutland before too terribly long or at the latest in March that we'll have a vote and, and we will know for sure whether you're going to whether, whether we go or we yeah. don't go, and that, and that could make a difference. And that yeah. would make the if, difference. If you went with West Rutland, would any of this be used? Would it, it would just be pulled out of there and sold because you wouldn't need it anymore because you've got West. If Rutland. we go with West Rutland, it's going to be West Rutland's headache. Okay, that's right. that's, the, right. that's the plan. Okay. So the thing is, but in the meantime, if there's you know if there's money's available at some point along the way, we certainly okay are interested in looking to do whatever we can okay that gives us a timeline that's good good thank you anything in the lister's office that could you know conceivably be covid recovery related that you folks are looking at I, no i i, I can't this yeah uh, cool we, we we made it through the covid and because right now it's no, I, I just don't. Okay. Well, if you think of anything, the money is going to be around for a while. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice if you get that extra from the county. That, I know. Wouldn't that be great? Possibly mm -hmm. out there. That wow. would be yeah. super. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's what I was. was I, I, I might add, and, and you should you should note it, Howard, uh, what Mary said about the uh, allocation versus the spending of this money and that that's critical in this particular case right here because, yes because true. we could do an allocation with the stipulation that it wouldn't be allocated until, until after that decision is made or we could wait and see what the decision is so as not to sway because it's not way. that far off yeah, right. yeah. okay yep. good but you got it there you put that in your pile of stuff there it's in the um Don just passed it on to Bill, right? Oh. <laughs> okay. He is passing it on to Bill. So. I was in the process of doing that. Um, <laughs> at this and the previous listening session, we've had, um, Bill is keeping notes. And we've got minutes of the proceeding and we will have a whole list of things. And people have been sending in comments and, and please do. I mean, we've, we've had a lot, number of good creative things. So Dick Bailey, you've been sitting there and thinking, now, what have you come up with? Well, this, uh, this, the more I think about this loan thing, the more sense it makes to me, uh, especially, you know, a low or no interest loan mm -hmm. for the business downtown. Because I know, you know, I have connections with some of these people down there and they're hurting and they've, they're they not sure if they're going to recover. Actually, even though they're back in business, mm -hmm. you know, they're, if it's they're given to the town. Can they're under they're underwater with their loans and, you know, it's just not good. We we can. I mean, and. We have to, I mean, there has to be a process to determine that they were hurt by COVID. So mm -hmm. restaurants come to mind as right. they, they the certainly sure. um, hardware stores, maybe not. I, I don't know. I don't know. Right. So right. we would have to have a process so we could document that, yeah, these people were hurt. And this was part of the recovery plan that we give them some right. of this money. So. Right. Yeah. And also the you know daycare facilities. <laughs> <laughs> you better tell me that it's something I don't know. <laughs> but I think that would, I think that's a good point, though. I mean, daycare facilities are. You know, oh yeah, they, they took a. They're hit. hurting. Yeah, yeah, they're really hurting. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of my my other job, just showed up, so I'm going to have to go. If you have any questions for me before I leave, 
<laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, well, keep the ideas coming. We appreciate you participating. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll keep Thank your you. name on the list. It'll go on the minutes okay. as a volunteer for the committee. I'm willing well, to do it way. if you need me. So just let me know. Okay. Thank by you. By the way, how's school going? Not yet. It starts in a month, but that'll be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Good okay. luck. Bye, Kirsten. Lydia, I know you're just there to listen, but have you come up with any ideas? Um, I've been here four years, but it still feels like I'm relatively new. What's the public transportation story in the town? Is there opportunity there to do things to expand people's ability to move around? You mean like the bus? I or... don't, right, public transportation. Yes. Okay. All right. I don't know. Other than the bus. And the bus is well publicized and well used? Um, uh, I, I don't know. <clears throat> they I might don't know. Right. It's hard to tell because the windows are always black and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I, I will say I had emails today from Jim Hall who's trying to get the bus lined up under contract to take the seniors over to uh, a restaurant and, and a day in Woodstock. And huh. maybe that could be something. I mean, it's, we have had a request to help out seniors by setting up a better meeting space downstairs, renovating our meeting room and where we vote. And um, that may be something the building committee will want to take a look at. But as for transportation, maybe we could fund some trips or some way enhance the ability of seniors to get around. Did you have anything in particular in mind? Are there transportation needs that you know of that aren't getting met? Not that I know of, but I'm one of the um, independent souls. So, but I'm just thinking of ways to bring people to Rutland Town as a place to live. Mm -hmm. And what are the things that would appeal both and, and the old folks, I mean, we're, we're fine. I mean, we've, we've made it this long, we'll, we'll do just fine. And there's plenty of us, but how do we get those younger taxpayers to come to town? What, what are the things that they look for and how can we enhance <clears throat> what we have? Lydia, you know, it's really interesting that you bring up this, this very point that you're bringing up right now because I had a conversation with a member of the board of aldermen and, and uh, without, without busting out any uh, uh, unique ideas, let me explain that part of this money, whether it's county money or town money or shared town money with city money may very well be used and could be used to sponsor an event. And when I say an event, I mean an event that would draw hundreds of thousands of people to the Rutland region. Um, I think this idea is going to be explored and the point of it goes exactly to what you were just saying. That we can't talk about any kind of recovery generally for the region or specifically for the town unless we attract more people. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, between the Lakes region and Killington, that's where the greatest marketing effort is being made to attract people into the region right now. But that's pretty static. And we're talking about bringing a lot more people in. And then once they're here for this event, whatever it is, then we would allow and encourage all of the participating uh, stakeholders um, to make their pitch for businesses, for residential development, 
that, that this is a wonderful place to be. And now that you're here, wouldn't you like to stay here for a longer period of time, like maybe the rest of your life? But if you had a captive audience of that number of people because of an event, I'm talking like a concert or an individual performance of, of a name brand performer that you would bring in that, that would attract lots of people. So I think this is something that'll be considered. And I, I would hope that we would think it would be a good idea. It's, it's pretty unique and it's certainly not something tangible. Like we're going to buy a, one of these digesters for a, <laughs> for a sewage plant or something like that. But it, it, but it definitely is the kind of recovery thing where if you're going to recover, you want to bring people back into the region who, who may have, you know, may have been leaving for other reasons. I don't know what, but, but you're right. You know, uh, we should look for ways to expand responsibly. I think I saw Dana Peterson. Okay. Dana. Okay. Thanks. Oh, Harry, you did see me. I was just saving some bandwidth and. Okay. <laughs> What do you have for ideas? <laughs> well, I was coming to listen to see what other folks were proposing. Um, given my unique situation now uh, as the leader of a, a career and technical center, I have an interesting perspective on how COVID has impacted uh, many different facets of our state and local um, businesses and uh, education facilities. So I don't know that I have a very specific um, idea in mind, but I can throw out some of the things that I have been thinking about with respect to the ARPA funds, because uh, we've got 1.5 billion, if I'm not mistaken, and I may have that wrong, but um, I, I think that that's what is being allocated in various um, allotments. Uh, and certainly 400,000 is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, but I think that the focus uh, should be on, uh, as um, Don was alluding to, um, some economic de development uh, opportunities and particularly training, whether those the training comes from, you know, municipalities or it comes from partners in either nonprofits or even uh, schools and particularly uh, Stafford, which is a very huge resource in the Rutland area. Um, and one of the things that you may not be uh, aware of is that uh, money isn't flowing to career and technical education in the way that it's flowing to many other um, educational entities. And uh, so that would be something I would recommend that you consider in terms of looking at how you might be able to partner with Stafford or other career centers um, uh, for uh, use in economic development, whether it has to do with providing uh, certificates or looking at uh, gaps in the uh, workforce and how uh, that could be improved either through, um, you know, some type of um, uh, recruitment um, and uh, infusion of uh, resources to uh, help uh, workers either change jobs as a result of being displaced uh, through the pandemic or uh, whether it's in other uh, areas that might be uh, beneficial in terms of uh, generating interest and enthusiasm and opportunity uh, for workers to get back into the workforce. Um, from our end, it seems like we're hearing uh, a lot of businesses uh, desperately seeking uh, employees and perhaps uh, a part of that could be to, as Don was saying, attract people from other regions of the country uh, to come and uh, settle here and um, 
doing something with uh, promoting positive lifestyles. Who knows? Uh, other things that I have been thinking about uh, that affect both education and um, business development is broadband access. And uh, I believe that there are uh, funds separate from ARPA that are going uh, towards that, but there might be small businesses that uh, might need a little bit of a boost to be able to uh, continue uh, their work. And perhaps some of the monies could be eligible uh, through grants for people to stay in um, the area and or come and establish uh, a presence because teleworking is going to become more of an option for those who are seeking uh, to do uh, various types of work. And I think it would be an opportunity to try uh, to encourage partnerships uh, to have viable workers who can telework, uh, come to Vermont, come to Rutland Town and uh, set up uh, a presence uh, here. I think that the opportunities are, are great. Um, for that. Uh, that's one of the things that our uh, Addison County Workforce Alliance has been um, contemplating, how to reach people who want to be in transition and how to support them in uh, setting up a teleworking presence, either for a larger company or for uh, individuals that want to uh, relocate to the area. So those are a couple of things that I have. I don't have specific a recommendations for a budget for any of the uh, topics that I've identified, but those are thoughts from the top of my head and I'm happy to entertain any uh, questions or responses to what you've heard me say. Okay, um, two things. I'm glad you mentioned broadband because when the um, sweats were here last listening session, they mentioned broadband or someone did. And then Esther emailed me and said, but there's already, her son had told her there was already funds for it, but you just made the link between the other funds and maybe small grants back to the grant program for funding of specific internet connections or some other connections for individuals or very small businesses. So I appreciate that. That's good. And, and uh, I, I believe I mentioned, uh, and I'll mention it again, um, not so much broadband, but um, emergency notification services, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, on the hiking trails. Yes. Northwood. Yes. And or at the pocket park, mm -hmm. uh, a, visual, a visual scan of the falls and the river flow if people are going to be using that to be launching kayaks or canoes or whatever, then they need to be able to, they could simply tune in mm -hmm. to, to a, uh, to a site uh, because we, they have, we, I know I use these live sites all the time for fishing over on the, mm -hmm. on the salmon river. And all you got to do is click on and you can see nice. immediately what's going on on the river. Right. Should be able to do that at the pocket park and also have emergency notification services like, 911 or, or something to that effect where if people have any kind of a safe safety or security problem along those trails or uh, at the pocket park or on the river someplace that they could be able to notify someone that they need help mm -hmm. so that's a safety concern but but Dana that the I uh, your your comments on the technology, or not so much the technology on the trades, on focusing on trades, which have been neglected. And we know they've been neglected in this society. I mean, um, so what can we do? Uh, you, you've, you've stated it. And I think one of the things that we could do is strongly encourage the reintroduction of, um, of home economics and shop classes in the school system. We got rid of a whole mess of nice equipment that taught kids how to use saws and hammers and tools and very functional things uh, that, that can lead to a, a innumerable careers in, in the construction trades. And uh, even though the, even though the, the trade school, the technical school uh, 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 at Rutland 
continues that education. I think for the for the kids to be able to get it in our elementary system would be beneficial. Uh, I you know short of you can't tell them to do it, but I mean if if we could provide the funds then for the equipment. I so what I would be- suggest to that um, Don is to reach out to Melissa Connor at uh, Stafford and find out what their what their needs are and what their um, capacity is because one of the things that we're all being at least as an initiative through Perkins five and through the agency of education uh, at the state level is to try to introduce uh, students at a younger age. And it goes back to the point that you mentioned in terms of removing uh, equipment and uh, opportunities to do things such as, such as woodworking and uh, home economics. Um, in terms of looking at viable career pathways and helping students become educated at a younger age about what uh, it takes to uh, engage in certain professions and to think of themselves as career ready and college ready. And I think that one of the things that I've striven to do since I've been here is whenever somebody talks about college and career readiness, which is part of the SBAC mantra, Uh, I've said that we really need to uh, emphasize career and college readiness, because if you help people to become ready for careers, you will help them to be ready for college training if that's what they choose to pursue. If you focus only on college training, there are some segments of our population that say, well, I really don't think I want to do that. And so you have to hook them by getting them interested in a particular career or career pathway. And that can be done through exploration. And young students can actually make uh, great inroads and seize very good opportunities to explore, to play, to have fun, and to do something practical. And that can be done best through uh, collaboration, through the career and technical programs that we have. And uh, there's no uniform approach. Each center is pretty much its own entity, they have their RAV and they have, you know, their own guidelines and policies and procedures for following. But I would say that uh, the uh, career and technical education's uh, director group is one of the most uh, collaborative groups that I've been part of in my educational career. And I find that they uh, are very good at problem solving. And so if you uh, asked them to think about ways that they could make a stronger connection between uh, Stafford Technical and Rutland Town School, they would be able to come up with some ideas for that. Not saying that that's what you should spend all of your money on, but uh, that is one way that you can take um, proactive steps in helping the youth of Rutland Town identify a, um, a, a career in which they could be passionate and in which they could uh, find interest and want to learn more. And that would certainly help uh, with the promotion of um, both career and technical education, but also the underpinnings of our economic um, drivers in the state and in terms of uh, particularly uh, employees that would be ready to step into positions that many um, employers are hungering for. And uh, many employers are at the point where they're actually offering uh, subsidies for uh, in, many employers are offering subsidies for their employees to continue their education because in this day and age, it doesn't end when you get a high school diploma. And uh, I think that if we wanted to be uh, creative, that we would be looking for ways, regardless of whether we have the money or not, to, to partner and get the information out that there are wonderful careers that people can explore. And one of the things that I'm looking at through our Addison County Workforce Alliance right now is identifying those careers that are just beginning that people haven't really thought about that will become uh, very popular in five to 10 years. And we have to constantly in career and technical education be looking at how we're helping to fill that need through uh, workforce development through uh, training certificates and so forth. And so uh, that's just uh, one way that we can build sustainability 
uh, at, both at the local level and at the statewide level for um, economic development and education as, as well as uh, you know, workforce employment opportunities. So I see them all being linked together. And getting back to Mary's comment about the um, about broadband, I, I think I read recently or saw a flyer somewhere that in um, Rutland County there's a fiber optic uh, service that is supposed to be. Is that First Light that's doing that? I can't remember which entity. Yeah, yeah, is, it's First Light. Uh, and so to make sure that everybody in Rutland town has access to that. Oftentimes it doesn't take it to the last mile. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really problematic. Uh, then you're, some people might not be as, uh, it, it may not be as accessible uh, for people depending on where they reside and what their income level is. Uh, I know that there's been a whole lot of talk about making broadband accessible. Uh, but currently, in certain parts of the town, the only the only uh, uh, opportunity is really through um, through Comcast, and Comcast offers a fairly decent service, but it's not necessarily uh, easily affordable for everyone. And so, uh, figuring out what those opportunities are and how people could get access to that, and uh, you know, a small subsidy might also be. Uh, beneficial, particularly if it's going to bring broadband at a reasonable cost uh, into um, our town. So just um, Dana, thank you for that. Let me ask one thing that's been, you know, kind of on my radar, and actually we've got it on our project board here, and that's um, transition planning, mm -hmm. and then generally getting younger people interested in serving full-time or part-time or as volunteers in town government, everything from, you know, police department to schools to listers to how do we do that? Is that on anybody's radar screen? Well, uh, I, I, those particular professions may uh, not be on folks' radar screen, at least at CTE, because there are no, outside of law enforcement, there are no programs that actually, that I'm aware of that actually target some of those jobs. However, one of the things that we have um, started to explore is uh, a variety of opportunities and looking at uh, co-op, cooperative education uh, experiences as being broader than just uh, uh, funneling somebody to a particular uh, industry or trade and making that broader. So once again, I would, I would reach out to uh, Stafford and other um, career centers to see what they can offer in terms of uh, co-op education and or job shadows so that students could come and see what it's uh, like. If they have a business program, for example, at Stafford, then you might want to uh, ask their teacher to uh, connect and find out uh, if students might be interested in uh, public service in that capacity. Uh, if for the, for the, the uh, CTE such as we do not offer one, but in law enforcement or uh, 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 what is it, emergency services, uh, they could certainly uh, provide opportunities for students to shadow. And we can even do that over the summer. It's something that's not, uh, very well known, but if a student is involved in a, uh, a CTE program and they want to do a job shadow or a job or a co-op, they can do that over the summer and be covered by the school's insurance, which is a real big uh, plus because it helps employers uh, not have to uh, f uh, foot that, uh, that bill for liability because uh, that's what we are training students to be able to do uh, so they can be covered under our liability insurance. And so we have started, we've piloted for the first year, five students this year that we are putting out on co-ops over the summer. And the only, the only um, string that's attached to that is the student must be returning to a career and technical program in the fall. And it doesn't say what program. So we could have, for example, somebody in our auto program go to uh, Virgin's 
and work with the um, Collins Aerospace. Uh, and we might have somebody out of our machining plant do the same, it could come out of engineering. So when you're talking about you know, various governmental uh, opportunities, there are several programs, human services might even be interested um, in that as well. So it, it's uh, finding the right match. And if you reach out to uh, Stafford, Melissa Connor, she might be able to connect you with uh, programs at Stafford that you might not think of initially that might uh, be a good fit for uh, students learning to, uh, or looking to gain some experience. So, and that Thank could you. be very rewarding. We had, we had our road commissioner join us. I think he's waiting. This is our listening session on use of ARPA funds, which reminds me that we're always looking for contractors for snow plows, mm -hmm. snow plowing in the winter. And out in the hallway was one of our um, assistant fire chiefs. And we're looking to recruit um, more firefighters. And I know we've had, you know, this is a statewide issue, trying to get enough volunteer firefighters into municipalities. So um, two more things. I mean, town government's going to be hurting if we can't fill these positions. Well, one thing, I, I think, Mary, to your point, uh, creating a partnership where uh, CTE centers can have a presence in um, even elementary and uh, middle schools uh, to make them aware of the needs, the opportunities, and the uh, compatibility of uh, various vocations with uh, combining you know, two part-time jobs or a, a volunteer job with a, um, uh, an area of interest in another uh, vocation can be something that I think would be beneficial for public service because I think that we compartmentalize things too much when we go yeah. into education and we should be decompartmentalizing that. Now, this is not a discussion for our funds, but just a discussion about how we prepare uh, young people for the future and providing them with greater opportunities to see what that would be like. Uh, and uh, taking <clears throat> students uh, on uh, a field trip to the fire station and having uh, volunteer firemen uh, talk to them and then uh, uh, see what they uh, might be interested in doing. Because sometimes those folks uh, join when, just like with, uh, what is it, Civil Air Patrol and other areas where they uh, start as young people and young volunteers and yeah. then uh, move up and uh, begin to take on responsibility. And when they go off and start to uh, earn a living, they, they remember their uh, those connections and can uh, continue to uh, support the the work of the um, <clears throat> the town in that capacity. So. We've had we are having more people join us. Um, we've got members of the planning commission here. You might recognize the back of their heads. Um, I, I do. Well, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> Hello. We're talking Bob. about. We've got a few more minutes to talk about possible use of the ARPA funds we're receiving. Um, any ideas from folks who have just joined us? We've had some really good ones today. We actually got some volunteers to do, uh, sit on a grants committee, a grant low interest loan for businesses and individuals affected by ARPA, or by um, the COVID crisis and using ARPA funds to help. So anybody with other ideas? On. I don't want to speak out of turn, but I thought Jim Hall was going to come and make a pitch for some COVID funds for the senior. Uh, we talked a little bit about money for the using the bus to get to a senior event, but you know he's welcome to. And you know this is not the end of the conversation. Let me say that as I mentioned at the beginning, we have. Um, until December 31st of 2024 to appropriate ARPA funds. And then we have an additional two years to actually expend all of the funds. So um, Teresa Cooley, what do we use the money for? That I have no idea. 
<laughs> but we've got time to think about it. So Dana, I wanted to uh, <clears throat> I wanted to compliment you. Your your extensive educational background shines through very nicely. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Okay. Well, if we don't have anything else, I think we're going to call the ARPA funding brainstorming session to a halt. Um, keep those ideas coming. We still have lots of time to use them, and we've got some really creative things that I think the next step would be for us to compile a list based upon what we've heard individually and through these sessions, get it to the select board and start piecing out the ones we may be interested in pursuing, and then taking the things off the list that we, we can't use ARPA funds for, but it's sounding like, as Don says, with a little creativity and liberal thought, and those were Don's words, um, <laughs> I think we might be able to come up with some really good programs for the town. So thank you all. We're going to call the ARPA session to a close. We've got three minutes and before the regular select board meeting, and I'm going to take a break. So thank you all. Very thank much. you.